What is going on guys? Welcome to week 9 and the final week of the regular season of the WBE. Uh, today we're matched up against the New York Noibats and Mewtwo fan Nate. So, uh, I think we have a pretty decent matchup here. He definitely has some threats that uh, could really hurt us here, but I think I'm pretty prepared. We're going to go ahead and hit and hop in far away player and uh, let's kind of see how this goes. So he has some, uh, like I said, some pretty big threats. He's working with uh, Mega Slowbro. Luckily, my Mega does pretty well against his. I think Mega Gyarados is going to be really useful yet again. Uh, so that's pretty nice. He's also got a Fairy, which is something that we've only really had to deal with a couple times. Uh, but obviously, my team does not like Fairy types. He has the Mr. Mime, so we got to worry about that. Uh, and then the last thing that I think is a threat that he's working with is going to be the Venomoth. Uh, so that was his first overall pick. It's a really good Mon if he can set up Quiver Dances. Uh, the main objective here is to try to not let that Venomoth set up Quiver Dances along with uh, we don't want the Mr. Mime to get up some Calm Mind. So I think if we can do that, um, we should be pretty set. Uh, Gyarados can definitely uh, do a bit to his team. I think is probably going to be our MVP here if I can keep that thing alive. Uh, but he's definitely got some stuff like uh, he does have Raichu, which is super quick that can whittle down things. Luckily, Raichu doesn't get access to like pivot moves in Volt Switch or U-Turn. So... Uh, that's something to keep in mind against the Raichu, but uh, I guess we'll go ahead and cut to when he accepts or enters the uh, the Bulba code. All right, so it looks like we are matched up with him. I'm excited to see what he's going to bring. Uh, I think he's guaranteed going to bring the Slowbro Mega, uh, Venomoth, and the Mr. Mime. They just do pretty well against my team, but uh, other than that, assuming probably Raichu, potential Sand Slash or Graveler for a Stealth Rocker, but so this is the team we're working with today. Uh, we brought back the Alolan Golem. I think it just does a little bit better as a Stealth Rocker in this matchup, so we brought the, brought the Bearded Rock yet again, and uh, I think with our natural bulk, we're going to do pretty well here. I know that Arcanine outspeeds uh, the Mr. Mime, so that's something that I do got to keep in mind. It also outspeeds the Venomoth as well, so if the Venomoth doesn't get up Quiver Dances, uh, just neutral, Arcanine does outspeed that thing. So let's go ahead and select the old party here, and uh, let's see what he's got. So, he did bring the Magmar, something that I didn't really expect. He has the Slowbro, and he I don't see Mr. Mime. What is this? Okay, he's got the Raichu, um, and then he also has the, the Big Bird. The Furo is actually kind of a threat. It doesn't have enough power to really knock things out, uh, but it is fast enough to kind of pick things off if he's done... Uh, damage to my team. Then he has Sand Slash and the Graveler, which uh, I really did not expect because Gyarados does great against both of those. So, what I'm seeing here is that I can take a hit with anything from Gyarados and pretty much knock things out, which is fantastic. We do great against the Magmar, Sand Slash, uh, Armstrong. We also have Earthquake for the Raichu. We can crunch the Slowbro. So, I think Gyarados is going to be. Uh, our best option here, we also don't see the Venomoth. He didn't bring the Venomoth either. That was, uh, two of the main threats that I was worried about were not brought. So that's something I'm super stoked about. I wonder why he didn't bring the Venomoth. That's interesting. Well, we're just going to go ahead and lead off with Gera here. I think it's our best option as he's probably going to go with a Stealth Rocker. Uh, if he decides to go Raichu, that's honestly fine. We'll probably just switch into Alolan Goal. And we have a great matchup against Raichu with that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I am excited about the fact that he did not bring the Venomoth or the Mr. Mime. My, three of my strongest Pokemon are weak to Fairy. I honestly spent most of my prep time kind of prepping for Venomoth and Mr. Mime, which is probably not a good thing because now I'm not as prepared for everything else. But I think with what he brought, we should be okay here. Um, he's actually going to end up leading off with the Fero, which is interesting there. He's probably just going to get a U-turn. He expects the He's expecting the Mega there. He's going to get a nice little U-turn off. Uh, I don't really want to risk any damage on Shrimp, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch directly. As uh, If I go into Golem here, he'll probably just end up switching into one of his Stealth Rockers. Unfortunately, we're going to have to risk uh, getting hit with Stealth Rock, which does kind of suck. But I say we just go Golem here. It's probably our safest bet. If, he's, if he decides to just go for an attack, which I doubt, I would be able to take it, obviously. And then we can kind of fire back and get our Stealth Rock up. But I think he's going to U-turn here. Yeah, there's the U-turn. Uh, this will allow him to go into his best option would probably be uh, the Sand Slash or the Graveler. So, unfortunately, that means he is going to be able to freely get up Stealth Rock here. Um, we could actually get our own Stealth Rock up if we just decide to stay in. Um, so, yeah, he goes Sand Slash here. And uh, this is kind of a scenario where either I could stay in and go for Stealth Rock, which will help me on switch-ins with his Fero uh, in the Magmar. Or I could just switch right back directly into Gyarados and just come in before the Stealth Rock gets put up 
Uh, I can get a lot of damage off with a waterfall. He can't really switch into that. I think that's probably what we're gonna get. What we're gonna do here. Uh, if he predicts this and just goes for the rock slide, it's gonna be a great play. But I think that is a little bit more risky. It's probably the safest bet for him to just go for the stealth rock here. So he does go for that stealth rock. Luckily, we're able to bring in Gyarados before. Um, Stealth Rock comes in, so we don't take that damage as a flying type. So now we can just go ahead and Mega Evolve here. And we basically can just click Waterfall, I think, is our best bet. He might stay in here, just sack this thing off, seeing as it already got up Stealth Rock. Uh, he could also bring in the Slowbro, which is his really, really his only switch in uh, to Mega Gyarados. So we're just going to click Waterfall here. If he does that, we have a crunch on it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn into an even more pissed off Shrimp. And we are about ready to go on a motherfucking Rampage. So... He actually does just stay in here. I don't know if this knocks the Sand Slash out. Um, as it does. Yep, okay. Mega Gyarados is just too damn strong. So, down goes the Slash. And, uh, he got a Stealth Rock up with that, which I think it was probably better for us to switch into Gyarados and not take any damage. As he has a free switch now, he's probably going to go Raichu, uh, which I can take an attack from Raichu um, and finish it off with an Earthquake. But it's going to do, I think, like, about half to Mega Gyarados. I don't remember the calcs correctly, but... I think it's probably safer just to save Mega Gyarados. We do kind of need it for his Mega Slowbro, as that's something I am kind of worried about. He could also go Firo here. If he goes Firo, that's a nice play because I'm kind of forced to switch out on a U-turn. Um, he's actually going to bring in Magmar. That is uh, definitely not something I expected. Okay, so he goes Magmar. He's got a shiny boy. Nice. Got the boobs on his head. Looking nice. But uh, I honestly don't know. I didn't check too much in terms of what Magmar wants to do to Mega Gyarados, but I would feel kind of silly for switching out in this scenario. Um, I think we probably just just go Waterfall here, right? He probably has... Oh, he's going to Will-O-Wisp. That's what it is. Why wasn't I thinking about that? I considered bringing Facade on my Gyarados, but I was like, he doesn't have really many potential Will-O-Whispers, but fuck, man, that's really bad for us. Wow, even though we're burned, we actually are still able to knock out the Magmar with a Waterfall. My god. That was a pretty obvious play there that I honestly just did not expect. I, I saw Magmar come in and I'm thinking like, what, is he going to... Like, Focus Blast is not even a thing. That was... Okay, well... Gyarados being burned really kind of hinders us uh, against the Slowbro, obviously. He's going to bring in the Raichu here. So, I do not want to take a T-Bolt from this thing. We're going to go ahead and get right the hell on out of here. And the reason why I brought Alolan Golem here is mostly because it does great switching into Raichu. Uh, Raichu has a pretty terrible move pool. Uh, when it comes to this generation, so, or I mean this, uh, this game, obviously it's the same in terms of generation, but yeah, so we can come in on a T-Bolt, so we take some of that Stealth Rock damage, but I think we take this T-Bolt pretty nicely, yeah, that doesn't do too much to us, and now I think it's probably best for us to go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock, it's gonna go ahead and whittle down that Firo, as that thing doesn't want to switch in too much once the rocks are up, um, although I, again, it doesn't really... He doesn't have much else that really gets hurt by Stealth Rock. I'm kind of pissed at myself for getting Gyarados Will-O-Wisp -Wisp there. I, I really should have made the switch into uh, Arcanine, I think, would have been a good play. But he's now going to bring in Armstrong, uh, which is the Graveler. So I get up my Stealth Rock here for free, which is nice. And now I've got a little bit of a decision to make. I'm afraid of this thing exploding on me. We got, we got two. This thing's my little freaking cousin here as... Uh, I want to just explode. It could potentially explode on me. I don't know if Golem is all that useful. We can switch into like one more T-Bolt on the Raichu. Um, but for the most part, I think we probably just... Uh, I think we just go boom ourselves here. Let's just go for the explosion. I really don't know if this thing wants to do anything else other than explosion either. Uh, so we go to go ahead and explode first. And uh, that's definitely going to hurt. So we're not going to down to about half. Of he if he ends up exploding here, he's going to do it on an empty battlefield. So that's kind of fine if that's what he decides to do. No, he just rock slides. Okay. Would have been pretty dumb for him to just go for an explosion, but all right. So now we get a free switch. We're kind of forced to go LL Cool J, I think. Man, am I excited that he didn't bring the Mr. Mime. That would have been bad, but uh, so we can bring in Tentacruel here. We knock this thing out with a Scald, although uh, he then gets a switch into Slowbro, which if Slowbro gets up Calm Minds, that would be kind of bad. Um, I think we don't really have much of an other option. I think we probably just have to go Tentacruel here. Uh, I don't know if he will want to save this thing, to be honest. Um, now that Mr. Mime isn't really in the play, I can kind of just use Tentacruel to Toxic if I want against the Slowbro, which will make that thing super nice to deal with. So let's just go for a Scald here, as that's, pro that's the safest bet for us to go for. As if he decides to switch into the Slowbro and gets a Scald Burn, that's actually going to 
be kind of upsetting, but I don't think he'll switch directly into that. There's really not much of a reason for him to have both Graveler and Sand Slash, so I was really surprised that he brought both of those, but he just stays in, and uh, Graveler is going to take some hot water to the face, and that is the dead Armstrong. So, he's down to three. He has Slowbro, Raichu, and Firo left with that Stealth Rock up. I'm not really afraid of the Firo. Uh, we've still got like a full health Dragonite, which can get a lot of damage off on uh, Slowbro with an Outrage. We can freely Outrage without Mr. Mime being around, so that's fantastic. Uh, so he, he's now going to bring in the Slowbro here. So I'm assuming he'll probably just going to want a Psychic. Um, but, I mean, I could bring in Gyarados if he doesn't Psychic. I mean, there's really not much else this thing wants to do. I think we probably just stay in and Toxic here uh, is going to be our safest play. So we'll hit him with the Toxic. As, uh, obviously he gets to turn into Mega Burrito Boy. Motherfucking Burrito Paul coming out here. <laughs> I can't get, I can't get over Slowbro's Mega. What the hell is up with that? I, I like it, but it's like... So random. Okay, we get off the Toxic, which is really nice. Now we put the Slowbro on a timer. And he's actually gonna teleport. Interesting. So he expected a switch. Teleport in this generation is actually a good move. Uh, if you're unaware... Essentially, it just gives you a priority in terms of switch, so if I would have switched out against that Slowbro, I would have like brought in my Gyarados, and he would have teleported after, which would have then gave him a matchup. It's like giving a Pokemon that doesn't have um, U-turn, essentially just a priority U-turn, so that's super nice. So, now he brings in the Raichu, as uh, this thing teleports in, we're on a neutral turn here. Um, I could bring in... I think Goro comes in relatively nicely against this thing. I don't really want to bring in... I don't want to bring in much. I mean, I'm trying to think. I think Machamp lives a drill pack from the Fero. We also have Thunder Punch on this thing for that reason, along with this for the Slowbro. Uh, I think maybe we just let Tentacruel go down here. I'd like to conserve as much differential as differential as possible in terms of winning uh, with as many Pokemon as I can, just because uh, that does help out my stats. But I think we just stay in here, go for a Sludge Bomb. We can live at least one Thunderbolt because Tentacruel is an absolute beast on the specially defensive side. So we take that nicely. And uh, the Sludge Bomb's gonna hit pretty hard. We could get a nice little poison here, maybe. Okay, didn't do as much damage as I was expecting, but that's fine. Um, so now he gets a free turn to go ahead and T-Bolt. Um, I think, honestly, we might have to just sack off LL Cruel J as much as you hate to do it. Um, it's probably looking like our safest bet as this thing's not all that useful. It can't really come in on Stealth Rocks too much. Um, but you have served me well, buddy. We didn't really need you to Sludge Bomb the Mr. Mime, so that's great, but one more T-Bolt. Is going to knock us out, and uh, critical hit, luckily, on a turn that didn't matter, so that's great. Alright. So now, um, I could go Tiny Wings in Agility. I'd be faster than the rest of his team, but then again, Slowbro doesn't die from one Outrage, so that's not the best idea. Um, I think we just bring in... I mean, the best thing that the Firo has against Tony is going to be Drill Run, and we can take that pretty easily, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so I think we just go Goro here. As he could just bring in the... He might want to bring in the Slowbro against this thing. Uh, if he does, we have Thunder Punch for it. But I think at this point, I should be able to come through with it. Um, he might, yeah, he might just switch right into... He might just switch right into that Slowbro. I think we just Earthquake either way. It's probably the safest play. Uh, he's actually going to Protect. That would have been a great turn to go for a Bulk Up there. But, uh... Protect Raichu, not something I expected, just kind of scouting out what I was going to go for. I considered bulk up, but I think that uh, had he just T-bolted, I still actually probably would have been a decent play, but it, on, in the long run, we're not going to get a sweep with Goro at this point, so he's expecting the Earthquake. I think we just, I think we just Thunder Punch here, maybe expecting the Slowbro to come in. Yeah, so he's probably going to go Slowbro. As I mentioned in my previous battle, this team kind of uh, does really well when you play it safe like a lot of the time it rewards you for kind of going for neutral ground plays like the earthquake there would have, been, would have been a decent play but uh he seeing as he does switch in thunder punch doesn't do much more damage than uh earthquake would have but it does decently well so going for a little bit of a prediction there kind of helps out um we can now just basically i guess i could go into shrimp i don't think this thing gets any recovery which is nice for us slowbro doesn't get access to like slack off anymore i don't think so um, we kind of want to save Machamp because it does beat uh, both the Raichu and the Furo. I don't know if it beats both of them um, back to back, but I think we have enough to kind of handle it. So I think here we could probably just go for another Thunder Punch as this thing's probably going to... Well, I'm kind of afraid of the Scald Burn. Let's actually, 
Let's switch into Gyarados here as we're taking a little bit of time on that turn. We're just going to switch into Gyra. Uh, we can still do some decent damage with Crunch even though we're burnt. Uh, but we'll see what kind of happens here. I'm assuming he'll probably Scald because... Oh, he's actually going to go for another Teleport turn, so that's nice. Okay. Making some interesting plays there as he teleports yet again. Uh, this does give him a free matchup. This is kind of a good uh, showcase as to why Teleport kind of became a thing in this metagame, which is really interesting and something that you don't really think about. Uh, but it does work really well for Slowbro because uh, a lot of the time he warrants a lot of switches. Okay, so in comes the Raichu. So we can take at least one Earthquake from the Earth, one T-Bolt from this thing, I believe, and then we can finish it off with an Earthquake. Even though we are burnt, um, we're just going to go ahead and click that young EQ. As this Raichu here. Look at how tiny he looks compared to my huge ass fucking water dragon boy. Okay, so he's actually going to protect, I assume, just to get a little bit more burn damage. As that's probably the best play, to be honest. I don't think it really matters that much, but uh, any damage helps. As we take a little bit of burn damage there. So, I still think we live a T-Bolt because my team is fat as hell. That is the thing about my team. We are so fat. Even though we're relatively slow, I do have some decent speed tiers with like Arcanine and Tentacruel. Um, but just the thickness of my team. It can almost, it can honestly Oko a ton of things and there's not a lot that can uh, one-hit KO it in return. So, we take that Thunderbolt nicely. Earthquake is going to absolutely demolish this little mouse boy. And uh, Gyarados just picking up some more kills. We're going for that MVP, boys. Also, fun fact, if you go ahead and check in the description, it does have a link to the WBE uh, fan document, which kind of showcases um, a lot of the statistics and the standings and things like that, along with the team rosters. But we actually have, I think, three Pokemon on the top ten uh, Pokemon in terms of kills, so that's amazing. So I'm happy about that. Anyway, uh, in comes the Big Bird. And uh, now we essentially just have to let Gyarados go down. I don't know if there's a scenario here where... We're kind of able to conserve our differential here. I think we just have to let Gary go down, unfortunately. Uh, that teleport play kind of messed us up with that, but Big Bird just going to finish us off with a drill peck, so that's fine. Uh, it gets us right in the unibrow. But Gyarados did fantastic in this match, and now it all comes down to pretty much Dragonite winning this match here with Outrage. So we're going to switch into old Tiny Wings here, and it's going to be nice to be able to have this guy pick up a couple of kills. So Tiny Wings kind of been slacking lately, but at least, honestly, I think a big part about having Dragonite in this draft league is it's something that the opponents really have to uh, they really have to kind of build their their team around they have to prepare for Dragonite quite a bit which I think is an important thing in these draft leagues is kind of just getting Pokemon that throws people off uh, makes them prepare for it even if it doesn't end up being that big of a threat it's still time spent and they uh, might have to run some different natures uh, in order to kind of play around Dragonite so Outrage finishes off the Fero all that's left is the slow burrito and uh, we are locked into Outrage here. Luckily, uh, this thing has taken a decent bit of damage. And obviously, we're going to outspeed because Slowbro's looking even slower in that shell. This man has no mobility. How the hell does this thing hop around? I have no idea. But Outrage is going to finish off the Slowbro. And that right there is going to be another dub for us, ladies and gents. We uh, finished off the regular season with a win. And that is fantastic. So, we're going into the postseason with a pretty solid uh, a pretty solid record here what does that set us at like seven and two so that was awesome that uh that worked out pretty well i think that uh him not bringing the mr mime and the venomoth were kind of his biggest win conditions where he probably should have brought those they do great against my team i might like dragonite machamp and mega gara all hate mr mime so i was kind of really worried about that um, but I think that my team just had a great matchup regardless. Even if he had brought those threats, I think we would have done pretty well. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed. And I will see you guys later. Peace out.